Well, we'd like to say good morning to everybody. We're glad you came out to be with us this morning. And uh, for those of you who have looked in your uh, bulletin uh, already this morning, uh, a big thank you to everybody who came out for the song test last night. We, uh, I put a hit count out when I first went back uh, to start the cameras up for the singers. And then took another head count, and then more people came in, took another head count, and uh, just as we were getting ready to uh, have the altar call, I had to adjust the head count again because one more showed up, but uh, that's okay. We had a grand time last night. Those of you who were here know we had a good time. Those of you who weren't, well, get to be here for the next one, maybe. We did have a good time. We did have some food left over. Uh, there will be some stuff out there after uh, church. If you want to stick around and have a uh, sloppy joe or a donut or stuff out there, we had some leftovers. That's, that's the way we want to say it. So stick around and have leftovers with us if you want to. If not, Brother Bob Burke, would you stand and ask God's blessing on our service? Well, thank God. We've come before you today. So grateful for the weather. So grateful for being here among friends in this church and church family. We're so grateful for the gospel group that was here last night that, that morning. Uh, Dick Sweet always said if your first name wasn't Roy, you didn't get them out much. Some of that gospel music was so inspiring and, and we had so much fellowship. Be with us throughout this day. Be with those especially need to be in touch. Be with our fighting women, fighting women that's overseas and so in our country. Bring them safely home if not. Be with our families to help warn the lost. And these things we ask for precious one and Amen. Amen.
we can remember some of the special prayer requests we've got in our bulletin. Uh, Brother Brad, uh, Red and his family need our prayers. Uh, remember Jim and Sandy with health issues. Uh, Sister Ollie with her health needs. Sister Nina Williams with her health needs. Uh, Sister Dora with her health needs. Sister Jane or Sister Julie. Uh, need of a, desperate need of a liver. For her transplant. Uh, Aunt Dorothy with her health needs. Brother Chuck and Sister Rosie with their health needs. Chuck has really come a long way from where he was about a long time. We're worried about tonight. And Brother Gary, as his health improves, keeps him in your prayers. Anybody else have prayer requests? Yes, my name is Woods family. time to say good morning everybody again uh, I know that I, 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 I say this occasionally uh, maybe too often it's almost like business when I say good morning or whatever when I come over here it's good morning it's good morning to my Christian brothers and sisters and it's knowing brother Chuck one of these days I'm not going to be behind the podium but somebody up there is going to say good morning <laughs> And thousands upon, well, millions, billions of people are going to look at the Lord and maybe it won't be morning out of what he's going to say. He's going to say something. When he does, we're all going to shout back, glad to be here, praise the Lord. And uh, it is going to be, Sister Veronica, something far beyond anything we've ever done. How many of you here been to like a, a high state or Michigan state or Indiana state football game or basketball game, something like that? Yes, Elvis concert, you know, Kiss concert, whatever. All of those things were sort of okay. Uh, we went down, my wife and I, she, she went actually went, I think, three times, I don't know, twice or something like that, down to the old Jets baseball stadium. We sat out in the hot sun for Billy Graham. Uh, that, was a, that was a fun time. Uh, and, and you look around, and literally, there were thousands upon thousands of people there. Uh, I'm not sure that a baseball uh, arena in the outfield was really designed to have metal folding chairs on a muddy field that had rained the night before, but whatever. Uh, they put them out there. We sat out there in the hot sun and listened to Brother Billy Graham expound upon John 3.16. I thought when we went down there, well, we're 
Billy Graham's going to be there. Oh, this is going to be so deep. This is going to be so strong. This is, oh, this is going to be something different. He said, if you've got your Bible, will you turn to me to John? Chapter 3, verse 16. And I thought, man, I've heard this verse before. <laughs> but uh, we did have a good time. But, you know, as good as that was, Sister Linda, it will not compare to walking into heaven. And uh, I just, I'm just glad everybody's here. We're practicing for Brother Randy that day we walk in. Hey, I haven't seen you for a long time. I haven't seen you for a long time either. How'd you get here? I, I just walked in. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a fun time. This is your part of the service who wants to brag on the Lord today. You had a good time last night or last week. Or he's been good to you and you just want to give him praise. Who wants to be first this morning? Not everybody at once. Anybody got a song? Not one of them 
of normal men will make any eternal difference to one man, one woman, one boy, or one girl. But there was one man, a little bit different than the rest of us. They called him the Son of God. His blood makes all the difference in the world. And it's the difference that the blood of one man makes is almost the same difference we're going to see in the scripture that I want to talk to you about this morning. Before he died, he spent three and a half years walking up and down through Jerusalem. You've all heard the story, no doubt, about the young boy who came to his dad and he says, Dad, I need a car. And his dad said, well, fine, son. Three things you got to do. Number one, you got to pick up your chores. Make sure you've got work to do around this house. You need to get it done. Okay, Dad. You got to break your grades up. Okay, Dad. You got to shave that beard and get a haircut. Well, okay, Dad. So a couple weeks later, he comes in and he says, Dad, what do you think about that car? I said, well, have you been doing all your chores? He said, oh, yeah. I guess you have. Your mom hasn't said anything. How about your grades? You handed in the grade card. Huh? Yeah, that's okay. He says, how about this beard and haircut? He says, well, you know, Dad, I've been thinking about that. And I talked to the pastor. You know, the pastor and I, we came to the conclusion that Jesus, well, he had long hair and a beard. Dad looked at him and said, yep, he walked there the place he went to. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that to make the point that Jesus loved those people and us enough. I can't tell you the number of times he went from Nazareth down to Jerusalem, back over to Tyre, up to Capernaum. Nazareth to Jerusalem is 70 miles one way. Uh, I don't know what 70 miles is from here, maybe Chillicothe, uh, maybe Lima, I don't, I don't know where 70 miles ends up on the way to Toledo up there. I know it's not all the way. Uh, it would not be as fun walking from here to uh, Chillicothe if you thought about walking from Ashland, Kentucky to 70 miles east someplace. You get some kind of an idea because that part of Israel is not flat like a pile. It's much more of a mountainous of West Virginia or Eastern Kentucky. Uh, but he, he loved the people he was ministering to enough to make that walk. Uh, he loved us enough to give his blood for us. And one of the teachings that he did, one of the things he taught in the greatest sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount, he went up on a hillside there, not really a mountain, it's a little hill, uh, up north of Capernaum. He went up and he found a place to sat down and uh, Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, he wants, wants some time to read the greatest sermon ever preached. Right there it is. Sermon on the Mount. There is enough information there, Brother Chuck. Fellow can get saved, stay saved, go to heaven, take his brothers and sisters with him, and live a good Christian life and you don't have to read anything else out of the Bible. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 will do it. But this is part of chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, Jesus said, After this manner, therefore pray. They had asked him, Teach us how to pray. And this was what he taught. He said, Teach, pray this way. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I hit the wrong button. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Our precious and most kind Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ more than anything else we can thank you for. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that makes us able to come to you and ask to be saved. 
And then once we are saved, it can not only make us saved, it can keep us saved. Take us all the way to heaven. We thank you for that, Father, but we also thank you for the great teachings that he gave us. This is one of them. Help us, guide us, and direct us, Father, to look at your word, understand your word. We'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. They all said Amen. Amen. When we begin to look at this prayer, we see the first part of it up there. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Strong start. Good place to start. Praising the Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There are a lot of things we don't like. A lot of people here that have kind of Republican leanings. Some people here have a little bit of Democrat leanings. Some people here are union, strong union supporters. Other people believe that union is the first word of USSR and ought to be thrown out. You know, we all have different little opinions about different things and so forth. Here, there is no opinion to have. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's a strong prayer. It's a great prayer. It gets us started thinking the right way. If, you know, perhaps anybody here had woke up last week and just things just, ugh. I'm not sure I'm going to want to go back to bed and start this thinking day over. You start out with this little prayer. Everything works fine with no trouble at all until you get in a group of people and someone says, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. We all get down to, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And uh, all of a sudden it gets a little bit quiet. It gets a little bit quiet, but we don't know where it's going from there. Sometimes the leader says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And the other fellow said, he looks at him and says, no, 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 no. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. There's your two different versions. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Two different versions. How many of you have never heard one of these two versions? See, not a hand went up. Because we've all been in that situation where somebody said, let's pray the Lord's Prayer, and we all wondered, which way is he going to go when he gets down there? Is we going to do debts or are we going to do trespasses? I'll be quite honest with you. In school, in grade school, I remember we did trespasses all the way through grade school. We quit it in the eighth grade, went to high school, we, we quit saying the Lord's Prayer every morning, every morning like we used to do. I thought that was kind of wrong, but... I'm just a ninth grader, a little skinny kid that doesn't know anything, and the teachers didn't want to do it, so we didn't. But we always prayed trespasses. I mean, that's just the way we did it. That's, that's what we were taught. Uh, church I used to attend at the end of Sunday school, everybody stood up. I'm sorry, not the end. At the beginning of Sunday school, everybody stood up, and we prayed trespasses. There was this little skinny guy named Bob came in, and uh, he got saved there at church. And it uh, wasn't too long. He said, you know, you all pray wrong. Who are you to tell us we pray wrong? Well, I was reading in the Bible, it says this. Well, it says it the other way someplace else. No, it doesn't. This is the Lord's Prayer. This is the only place where it's complete, put together. There's, in the book of Luke, there's part of it. It's, it's a little bit different way. This is the entire complete prayer. And there's many people that are accused of being the one that changed it. A fellow named Tyndale is one that's used. Uh, he's beat up really bad, Sister Veronica. <laughs> they accuse old, old man Tyndale of all sorts of different things. Part of the reason is, he said, you know what? Here in England, all we've got is the Latin scriptures or the Greek scriptures. We don't have a book that's in English. That people can read and actually understand God's word. I think I'll do one. So he did. And uh, 
He's the one that kind of got blamed for it. Uh, the Catholic Church gets the blame for it. The Anglican Church gets the blame for it. We, we don't really know who made the change from debts to trespass. But we do know the change was made. The original in the Greek, as far back as the oldest manuscripts we can find, the word debts was used, not trespass. And it is a huge difference. We want to talk about that today. Um, many will say, what's the difference? And it is a huge difference. It's a big difference. Uh, but the first thing we want to look at is looking at trespasses. Look at the definition. So what's the definition of a trespass? Definition of a trespass, it's an unauthorized use or an unauthorized place to be. For example, right now, I'm kind of trespassing on Randy's space. Randy's space in the pew, you know, it's kind of the size of Randy. We can give a foot on someone's side, a foot on the other foot. Not quite that much. <laughs> but see, if, if I came and stood this close to everybody here, there would be some, somebody here. Somebody really wouldn't like the pastor getting this close. And it'd be kind of troublesome getting there through the uh, Sullivan family there. Somebody's feet would probably get stepped on. But it's just a trespass. Nobody got hurt. Didn't cost anybody any money. Just kind of got into somebody's space there a little bit. It may or may not leave evidence. If I trespass, it's, you know, I don't know, say I can't think of anybody who would be a trespasser, but if somebody did come in and trespass down through the carpet here, unless they stomped in the mud, we probably would never know that they were here. If there's four inches of snow on your front sidewalk and they trespass up there, just as soon as the snow melts, it's gone. Or in Ohio, wait two weeks, there'll be another piece of snow that will fill it up. Does everybody recognize that today is not really April 22nd? It's February the 87th. You know, the way this weather is going, has got to be. But at any rate, <clears throat> the trespass a lot of times uh, will not leave evidence. But today, especially, a trespass can be um, a privacy invasion. If I got across the field from where Mike lives, Mike and Nina, and I set up my binoculars or I set up my 60 power scope and put my camera behind it and sat there taking pictures. Am I trespassing on Mike? Sure I am. I'm trespassing on his privacy. Anybody here looked at your credit card and see where somebody charged something that you didn't buy? Oh, come on. Oh, okay. I, I see a few say I didn't see any hands go up. I didn't see a few heads shaking. We looked at our uh, Bank of America card here a few years ago. $125 charge to Walmart in, uh, I don't know, Alabama someplace, wherever they're uh, ordering over the internet. $125 charge. Walmart. $125. Walmart. $125. This is call them up. Especially when I recognized it was a charge to Walmart from you know, where, where they send it to you, like Amazon or eBay. Um, I don't buy things from Walmart that way. I go if I want something from Walmart, I drive down, walk in, pick it up, pay for it, leave. So I call the fellow up and he says, uh, "Now, Mr. Serena, are you sure you did not buy this piece of exercise?" Yeah, I'm sure. And you're sure you did not have it sent to San Diego, California? Yeah, I'm sure. He says, have you ever been in San Diego, California? I said, yeah, about April 1st, 1968. I got on an airplane left and ain't been back since and have no plans going back. Ain't nothing there that I left that's worth going back for. He said, okay, you repeat after me and you swear that you didn't do this. Okay, I have white Serena do prompt. He said, okay, now I'm going to take this off of your car. 
But be advised, if we find out that you lied to me, we're going to put it right back on. That was a, that was a trespass. Somebody trespassed on my credit card. And this time there actually was, there was, there was, a, there was a problem. I could have been out $125. In fact, if I hadn't stopped and really looked at that, because I just walked on down through there, it kind of looked like, you know, everything looked right. So I tried to figure out what she had bought at Walmart and charged. And she said, I didn't buy nothing at Walmart and charge. Well, I didn't. It must have been. No. Well, okay. But that's a trespass. A debt is a little bit different thing. We're a trespass sometimes. Well, you know, he's looking the other way. I can slip over here. He doesn't even know I'm here unless I bump his leg. The, the trespass can happen and nobody ever knows anything about it. But it still occurred. If a debt occurs, everybody knows about it because there are more than one person involved in a debt. We have a debtor and we have a credit. In all cases where you have a debt. Not only is there more people involved in it, but it always, always, Results in the transfer of some kind of power. We not we normally think of a debt where somebody gets a mortgage on a car, mortgage on a house, loan for exercise equipment from Walmart. You know, uh, we have we, we think of debt most of the time in financial terms, <clears throat> but debts don't always have to be in a financial term. I can be indebted to Mike because Mike brought his shovel up and took his shovel and cleaned out my entire 600 foot ditch out in front of my house. One shovel at a time. I would, I would be indebted to you, Brother Mike, if you would come up and do that for me. <laughs> what do you say? Wait, hold your breath till I get there? <laughs> With a debt, there is always, the, both parties know, when it's done, both parties know the cost of it. And with a debt, there will always be a repayment. Whether it's karma, everybody knows what karma is? Whether it's the Lord, the Lord said vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. Or whether it's just payback. With a debt, there is always that. Why should we be concerned with this? Well, first, unlike trespasses, debts will always, in some little manner, or big manner, harm somebody. If I go over to Brother Mike and say, Brother Mike, you know, I'm really having a hard time. I need $5,000. He said, Phew. But he said, okay. If he gives me the $5,000, you say, well, there's no harm to that. Yes, there is. I have taken his ability <coughs> to go buy nine of that new mink curtain. <laughs> or that new, can you get a seven here at diamond for five, five grand? <coughs> Mark says no. <laughs> he says, I don't know. I've never bought one. He will. What kind of ring did you buy? Uh, Never mind. <laughs> we better not go there. Well, I can remember exactly the place that I took her <coughs> down in Delaware, two doors up from what used to be the drugstore there on the north side of the road.
Forgive us our sins as we forgive the sins of others. A trespass will not always harm somebody, but a sin will, a debt will. Say, Brother White, how does a sin hurt somebody if he sins against himself? Well, he hurts himself. Uh, these, these kids that take meth, for example, I don't know how many of you here have paid any attention to it. I got a, a notice a while ago, probably within six, seven, eight, ten months ago, might have been a year ago. And I'm not sure, I think it was a doctor that did it. But what he was bringing forth was the difference between a beautiful, young, 21-year-old woman and a good-looking, young, 21-year-old young man. And then both of them, two years later, and the old numbers of meth experiences. The girl looked like she was 35. Teeth that were rotten. Scabs all over her face. Hair, part of it had fallen out. He looked like he had taken on the Pittsburgh Steelers without a helmet and tried to run through the whole bunch of them and he didn't make out too well. He didn't understand that. Sin, even against yourself, has a payback. Sin, even against yourself, hurts yourself. The final sin, of course, the ultimate sin, and we all know we, we, we've seen it in the paper. Person decided life wasn't worth living. It took your own life. Is that a sin? I think it is. Did that hurt the person? I believe it did. Was there a payback to that sin? Yeah, there sure was. You say, Brother Dwight, do people that commit suicide go to hell or to heaven? My answer to that, because I've been asked that, a, I couldn't tell you how many times as a pastor, uh, his name is Jesus Christ. Call him up and ask him, because I don't know the answer to it. And I'm not even going to take a guess. But I will say this, I believe that suicide is a sin. And I don't know that the person has time to repent of that sin when they commit suicide. I think there's probably some that have had the time, you know, they tie a rope around their neck and jump off the cliff, and uh, while they're struggling there, maybe they can say, Lord, I wish I hadn't done this dumb thing. But when you take that 44 magazine and you stick it right up there, you pull the trigger, I'm not sure you have the capability to make a decision and say, I'm sorry. But again, unlike trespasses, debts, or sin will always have to pay back. Uh, Mike, stand up, if you would, please. Ready? Come up here. I need, I need two volunteers. <laughs> yeah. We got a debtor and a creditor. Anytime there's a debt, you always have the two. You have a debtor and you have a creditor. Here you are, creditor. There's the record of the debt. Turn around, let everybody see it. And here's the debt. Record of the debt. In a loan or something like that, you always have this piece of paper that tells everything. It's just a legal mumbo jumbo, not linear. Part of the mumbo. Yeah, the legal mumbo jumbo. That's exactly what it is. But now, uh, Debtor, if you want to come down here for just a second, creditor, if you want to walk over here so that you two can face each other. Uh, debtor. <laughs> you coming after that boat? Oh, okay. Debtor. Our debtor here walked out one day. He was kind of hungry. And the uh, family hadn't been fed for a while. <laughs> this creditor over here had this whole yard full of chickens. Now, you need to apologize for him. You can tell him the chicken was good, but you need to apologize to him. Sorry. I feed my family. And the chicken was delicious. <laughs> I don't know how you raise them, but man, they were good. And then 
after he came down to apologize to him, he got his pickup truck to leave, and he backed into his Cadillac, broke the front headlight, tore up the right front <coughs> fender, and uh, bent in the uh, bumper and knocked out the turn signal. So you're going to have to hit him again. Well, you know, I'm awful sorry about that Cadillac. Tear up your yard or something. Believe me. I, I feel it right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then as he, he left on his way home, he got to thinking, you know, he, he could have not been so hard on the old chicken. He's one nasty guy. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really aggravated with him. Then he got home and the Lord got a hold of him, and so he had to call him up and apologize for saying bad things about him. You've got to apologize. I can't have all those things and bad thoughts about him. Just one right at all. Give me an awful lot. Take an awful lot from me. Man, I'm sorry. That's what I was thinking. I really don't. And then he says he's going to get in his car and he's going to come down paying for the chicken. So Mike's got to figure out how much the chicken is going to be. Uh, got two bucks on that chicken money. We're going to be here right now. Okay. We've seen the sin or the death. We've seen the apology. We've seen the repayment. Now, somewhere down here at the bottom would be the sign if it was a loan or the debtor. He would sign it. The creditor would sign it. And then when the loan or the debt is taken care of as they both apologized, the creditor he folds up his copy because the debt's taken care of. And he finds his file cabinet. And he files it. And you can file yours. <coughs> Shake hands. See, all it's taken care of. Cadillac and all of the other things. When they shook hands, 
when it was over with, this didn't get folded up and put in God's filing cabinet. This is what happens to your sins. I am so glad there is no record anywhere my sins. They're torn up. They're thrown away. They're not only forgiven, they are forgotten. And that's the difference. That's the main difference between debts and trespasses. A trespass, yes, can be done and just slipped away. The world that we live in today wants to change some of the wording of some of the things and the way we live so that it doesn't hurt somebody's feelings. It's not as strongly worded. This is one of the beginnings. We see, everybody under here, here understands what the term politically correct means. We are politically correct in our speech anymore. We do not hurt anyone's feelings with what we say. 500 years ago, 450 years ago, somewhere along that, that's where that got started. Same thing, being a little more politically correct. And what I wanted to leave you with more than anything else, as you read the scripture and as you pray, <coughs> don't think trespasses, think debts. And when you're thinking debts, remember, a debt means sin. That's what the word is. That's what Jesus Christ was teaching. That's what he was talking about. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Sister Rosie, if you'll come to the piano. Sister Linda. As you read the scriptures and you compare them to the things that people say, as you read the scriptures, and sometimes, sometimes the scripture will be bent, twisted, turned around. Make sure you read it. Read it and see what God did say. It's awful easy to stand up. It's awful easy to misquote, and it's awful easy to pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's not what Jesus said. Think that's not trespasses, okay? Let's all stand. Perhaps this morning some of these prayers. Perhaps someone say, Brother Mark, take me by the hand. I need prayer.
everything that uh, the Lord would have us do this morning. Uh, anybody have anything you want to share with us this morning? Just before we call dismissal. Again, we do have some food out there, leftovers from last night. If you want to stick around and have a leftover with us, you're more than welcome to. All hearts and minds are clear. Those of you who can, will, would you stand here your feet for a blessing this morning? May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Brother Chuck Roush, would you dismiss this assembly of a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on the food?